Thank you. Uh, yes, my name is Robert Boschman, and I uh, want to thank the uh, organizers uh, of the Seedbox Festival for, for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here um, among you, and I'm pleased to uh, talk for a very brief moment about uh, Uranium City in Canada, and you can see uh, you can see here uh, where Uranium City is in Canada. Uh, this is the far north of Canada. Uh, this is the province of Saskatchewan, where I come from, in the heartland of Canada. This is the province of Alberta. You've probably heard of the Alberta oil sands. Uh, they're right, right about here. So this lake, Lake Athabasca, straddles <coughs> two provinces. And most of the world knows about what's going on here. But very few people, including Canadians, know about the story that's, that's going on here. Uh, I grew up to the south, and throughout my childhood and young adulthood, I never went to Uranium City, uh, because Uranium City was a place you didn't go to unless you had to. Uh, people would fly in and out to work in the 37 uranium mines that were operating there from 1953 to 1982. Uh, the major corporation uh, that was involved in uranium mining there was called uh, El Dorado. So think about that name for a while. <laughs> and El Dorado was a crown corporation, so owned by the government of Canada. So very much a F Foucauldian biopolitical uh, happening that occurred mid-century in a city that was pre-planned. Uh, by the Canadian government and by uranium mining interests as a single commodity city that would be uh, built for this one purpose. And people came from around the world, uh, were basically shipped in to work in these 37 mines. Uh, of the 37 mines that, uh, that were operating, there were many individual mines and mine shafts uh, one has been remediated. So I work in an English department. I'm a professor of American literature and environmental humanities in Mount Royal. And I decided that uh, I would make a point of going to this place that I never went to as a younger person. And a colleague and I decided to be very undisciplined and step right outside our discipline and uh, find funding and go to Uranium City. We've made two field trips there now. Uh, and we went with uh, an array of cameras, a drone, uh, a Geiger counter, uh, and just did all the things that we weren't supposed to be doing. Uh, and uh, uh, Uranium City is a very inaccessible place. You can only get there uh, by flying in, uh, or in winter you can drive the ice road. So the, our next field trip will be going on the ice road. Um, but if it isn't winter, then you have to fly in. The airport in Uranium City is the airport that was built by the Canadian government to uh, create space for or allow for uh, the use of, uh, a, at the time, a DC-3. So uh, uh, tens of millions of dollars were spent on this creating this airport uh, to be able to fly yellow cake out of Uranium City. And the yellow cake from Uranium City uh, went into things such as the Manhattan Project. So when you go there today with the Geiger counter, you notice that the radiation levels are elevated. Uh, this is Chernobyl without the meltdown. Um, most of the mines, the, ex all the mines except two, uh, have not been remediated. A third mine is currently beginning remediation at a cost of 100 million Canadian dollars. So it is a gigantic, uh, decades-long project just to clean up one mine. Uh, and as you can see, uh, when you visit Uranium City, you are basically in a laboratory, an environmental humanities laboratory. And quickly, just with the time I have left, I'll let you know some of the uh, themes uh, if you want to look at some of the uh, published, art, uh, published work that we, Bill and I have done so far, Bill Bunn and I, you can uh, Google Boschman Uranium and that will take you to an open access article in the Humanities Journal uh, published about 10 months ago. 
So some of the things that we're looking at in Uranium City and the work that we're doing are things like remediation, uh, resilience, uh, what happens to a Western modeled city when it is abandonment, when it is abandoned. Uh, is abandonment something that happens once or is abandonment something that is ongoing and always happening? And how do abandonments apply to our everyday lives? For instance, to the discarding things. Is that a form of abandonment as well? Because we're looking here at a, an entire city that was discarded and uh, uh, basically vacated. Uh, the city at, at the height of its population was uh, 5,000 people. There are 50 people there now. Uh, many of the people who live there now are indigenous, indigenous Canadians from the Dene, Cree, and Métis nations. Uh, the area falls under Treaty 10. So that's the treaty between indigenous peoples in that area uh, at the end of the 19th century and the, and the Canadian crown. Uh, and that treaty is uh, a valid treaty. You can, you can Google it and read the terms of that treaty. Uh, it's all there for people to look at. Uh, so this is a, a, a project that is uh, uh, ongoing. And uh, we, we have uh, an article, a website, uh, a book in progress, and giving talks like this, of course. Um, so I'll just say one more thing before I, uh, I leave off. And that is that uh, for me as a photographer, the, probably the most powerful uh, element of walking through a town like this with your camera and going into uh, house after house after house that's been standing empty for 35 years uh, is what you see in those homes. And it's a powerful and, and, and intimate experience to, to do this kind of thing. Uh, to stand in someone's kitchen and photograph the kitchen and see maybe a tree growing in the middle of that kitchen. Uh, to see part of the roof ripped away. And, and, and the thing that Bill and I have, one of the many things that Bill and I have come away with is a sense of the porousness of the relationship between nature and culture. If you want to talk about the dichotomy, uh, of course there is no dichotomy. And the porousness of, of what I am, what you are as an organism in its environment is, uh, is very, very real in a place like Uranium City. So thank you very much.